Sí, 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 sí. Sabato was also a physicist, so he, he studied, uh, he did his PhD, I think, in the Quran Institute, and then moved to U.S. and uh, spent the rest of his life doing literature. And uh, here he's saying that uh, the truth is perfect, is pr possibly perfect for mathematics, chemistry, philosophy, but not to life. That in life, illusion, imagination, desire, and hope. Uh, more important, and uh, perhaps uh, this does not apply exactly to the talk, but I think that we, I'm here working in social dynamics, and in this data, I'm not searching for the truth that 
the mathematics or the chemistry or even the physics is providing, but for some other sort of truths that is also applies to life. So, uh, the content will be very straightforward. I, I will start describing a little bit our database, mm -hmm. and then I will <laughs> propose a specific study I'm, I'm interested in. Uh, here and then I'll develop some method, some statistical tool, apply it and uh, try to model it. So uh, my social microcosms or my database are Usenet groups. I don't know how many of you know what Usenet groups are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, three <laughs> persons, four. Okay, so you can think as, as a standard discussion group or as sometimes now called Google groups. But it's essentially a uh, um, threaded discussion forum uh, divided in topics and the tree structure is uh, apparently in the name. So this one, for instance, is for computer operational systems, Linux, and miscellaneous questions. The other group will be interesting, completely different topic, is our recreation of music hip hop. And I'm interested in the properties, in the social activities or in the linguistic properties of these groups. So the structure is very simple. I have posts. <coughs> the first post defines a thread, a topic of the discussion, welcome, a question. And subsequent answers to this post uh, uh, build a thread. Inside this, each post, I have um, information about the author, the time it was posted, some text, and eventually some signature that I'm ignoring, it's, uh, some, some quotation of previous text. I'll try to use in my analysis all this information. Uh, just here is one, some flavor of some statistical features here uh, in this database that some of you might have uh, uh, also encountered in your studies or in different databases. For instance, uh, this is the distribution of users. How many users have end posts in this huge database? So we see that uh, we have uh, most users have only, or 90% of the users have uh, less than 10 posts, but we still have a non-negligible fraction of users that have contributed more than 400 posts. So these very broad tail distributions are very typical for soci in social systems, and they are also present here. And there are also numerous other uh, statistical features that you encounter also in other uh, human activities, both online and offline, that you, found, uh, you find also in this database. For instance, some users, uh, most users contribute only uh, in one day or in, in, a, in a few days, but there are users active for more than 10 years there. So you have all these uh, different scales of, of uh, heterogeneity in, in users. Uh, so why I'm interested in the Usenet? Well, many reasons are common to, to uh, many words in social dynamics or in, in physicists' approach to, to social systems. For instance, here I have more than 50,000 different users interacting. It's not a very large number, but still it's larger than a more traditional analysis of human behavior, let's say. <coughs> so it reproduces general statistical features of social systems, as I mentioned. It's a large corpus size, but mm, I want to stress more these issues. It's a spontaneous usage of language, right? So it's not, so people are communicating here in a very sponta spontaneous and sometimes even very colloquial and mimicking spoken language. So it's not an experiment uh, designed to track some properties, but it's some observation uh, that we have record now. And this is really something new. And the, perhaps the most interesting related to Usenet is that it's relatively long time scale. So Usenet is way older than the World Wide Web. So it, this is more than a decade before World Wide Web. And in the 80s and early 90s, this was the main source of communication of global communication. Right? So we have uh, relatively long time scales for the type of data we have. Uh, we will see that it is short on the linguistic time scales, but still relevant. And it was, at least at some point, uh, isolated information. So maybe if you think nowadays about Twitter data that has been, uh, is, is uh, of course a larger number of, of uh, of these numbers, but it is very hard to assume that the information there is isolated from the rest of the internet because people are just connected uh, through so many different means. While at, the, at this time, probably Usenet was somehow self-contained. So, they, they, yeah. okay. 
how were they communicating? I don't know. Well, so the, in the Usenet, you, you, it's a distributed uh, discussion. No, no, I mean uh, before the, uh, mm -hmm. the World Wide Web. Yeah. Yeah. So through yeah. the internet. So the, the yeah. internet existed. Okay, okay, okay. okay. now I understand. Okay. Yeah. And data being kept from that time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, not all data, but uh, Google bots part of the of the database on internet groups, and they, they are now available online. So many groups. I think the first post in, in Google groups. So they call now Google groups, but so, some of the Google, Google groups were Usenet groups before. They go, uh, I think, to 1982, uh, and there are also other Usenet groups going in, available in the internet. So. The activity, of course, increased dramatically in the 90s, but it's still the country. And now it's not so popular anymore. Right? Well, the prediction that Usenet will die go back to 1990s. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bad, so. Of course, uh, uh, with the World Wide Web, with blogs, you now blogs were uh, really uh, taken a lot of, of, of the popularity of these means. So certainly now it plays a, a different role than it was at that time. Okay, the specific study. So here is one paper that uh, appeared this year in science that is uh, on a completely different database. And what they are doing here is tracking uh, statistics of words. So I, I'll be here doing also the same. So uh, dynamical properties of individual words. For instance, here it's time scale. So uh, they are working the uh, uh, Google Books database. So they claim they have 4% 4 4 of all published books in English, right? so in the whole history. And so they are able to go for, in, in a 200 years time scale and plot the frequency or the, the normalized number of times a given word appears as a function of time. And so the questions they are asking are, many of them the traditional co question in historical linguistics, for instance, how uh, different uh, conjugations of verbs like sped, speed, it, speed up, uh, changed in time. Uh, you see here that uh, the, the tendency of verbs to be conjugated in a regular form, uh, like burnt and burned, right? Uh, or or snicked and snuck. Yeah? Well, these are two variations that are compete, competing. There are other things they did. They would try to quantify popularity of, of scientists like Galileo, Darwin, Freud, Einstein, and or, or different things here, right? So. How was the American from the British distinguished by the by the user information? No, in these cases, this Google Books database. So this is this is this paper, I, I, uh, and and they were analyzing books, and the date is the date of publication of the book, and I believe the the nationality is distinguished by the author or where it was published. Okay, so another. Uh, Time scale of a similar analysis is also this work, also it's a preprint still, that is analyzing in Twitter database uh, uh, the frequency of words like breakfast, which is picked around 8 a.m., and lunch around noon, and dinner around uh, dinner time, and well, <laughs> because not in Spain, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, and here, uh, for instance, uh, starving chicken, hungry, eat food. Well, th this work in particular is interested in associating some happiness uh, feeling to each word, which is stated here. But I, I'm not focusing on this. I'm just trying to focus on, on this type of plots that are being used in many different ways. Now, and we see the same in Usenet database. These are two words I'm interested in. This is also a normalized frequency, a count of words. Uh, normalized to the peak in this case, for instance, this is the word GNOME, the desktop environment system in Linux. So we clearly see that it started, it was created in 97, so it's not a surprise that it was created here, but it became very quickly popular and then it decayed in popularity. Well, this tale here I don't trust much because this group started to be very inactive, but certainly there was an increase in popularity. Oh, well, this is, sorry, this is everywhere, so I'm confused. So GNOME here had this oscillation and here is the decrease. So the other, the blue word is LOL, which stands for laughing out loud. So this is an internet slang. So this is the, the way, uh, this is a new language, let's say, a dialect of English that is uh, widely, widespread in the, in the, not only in the internet, but, but also in text messages of telephones. So there are some accounts that uh, uh, teenagers or, or kids write more than speak. 
right? So we have a new dialect of English that some some uh, people, well, uh, I don't want to enter too much because this work is not going so deep into this, but it's still, this is a word, a new word that is not obvious, no? so you don't know what it is, what it means. It was introduced in the early 90s, so there are records in, in dictionaries in Usenet in the early 90s, and somehow, some way, around 97, it, it uh, became uh, widely accepted in these communities, for instance. <coughs> this, is the com this is the Linux community, so it's not a very... Uh, innovative in, the, in language terms, but still, and there are other competitors um, to, for these lengths, there are other funny words, there are smileys, but somehow LOL did it, right, so nowadays people are speaking LOL, speaking in spoken language, and LOL is a word in Portuguese, in German, and, and in other languages, even if it is a, in principle, an English acronym, so it's much more than an acronym. Right, so these are two types of innovations, let's say, that can be tracked here. And, and so why do we want to study this? I'm personally interested both in the language change itself, how language changes. For instance, here in the changing the vocabulary, but also tracking words is a way of, of tracking how people interact and how as a tracer of human activities, right? So uh, we know how people got interested in this product, or we know how people got... Uh, uh, adopted this new type of dialect or, or, or language. So we want to go beyond the previous analysis of simple recounting the frequency of words in time. So this is, has many limitations. Of course, uh, breakfast is more popular at breakfast time. Of course, uh, in the year the norm started, it started to be used. So we want to, to get more information than only counting frequencies. So the information we want to get here is, for instance, who is influencing who here? Are users uh, the driving factors of, of these innovations or are perhaps topics? It becomes more important to use products like GNOME or to communicate with a language like a formal language. Are there endogenous or exogenous effects playing a role here? And to do this, I'm uh, introducing a new statistical tool in this case, which I'm calling dissemination of words. Uh, so the question we would like to answer is, for instance, uh, in a statistical uh, robust way, is how many users know a word? How many users know the word LOL? How many users use the word, right? So probably no one using this case can, can, have, can be extremely different, but let's fo focus on use because this is something measurable. So the problem is that this database, because of these uh, very skewed distributions that I have, and because a very uh, bursty or very uh, uh, dependence in time that is very complicated, it becomes uh, statistically difficult to, to quantify these things, right? So more generally, I, I want to introduce measures. In this case, it's for I'm counting words as the event, but I think it could be useful in other uh, uh, senses as well. I want to. Uh, define measures that are robust against this type of fat tail distribution and burst distribution. And to do that, I, uh, uh, the procedure is extremely simple. So I do a longitudinal analysis, so I take a window of six months centered around a time t and consider all posts in this window, and then I count the number of different users that use that word. So these users, I know they know the word. But I normalize or I divide by a new model, and in this new model, is, is a new model where I shuffle the whole text. It's equivalent to shuffling all text, killing all structure in the text, but maintaining the, the thread structure. So the number of authors in each thread, the number of posts in, uh, by each author, the length of each post. And so this is what I call U tilde. So the ratio of the actual count by this new model count is what I ca count in dissemination. Right? So it's really important to, to, to keep what is D here is the ratio between the number of users divided by the new model. So if d equals 1, I, we can say the users are using these things almost randomly. If du is larger than 1, there are more users using the word than predicted by this new model. And if du is, is, is smaller than 1, it means that there are specific groups of users using this word. So it's less than what one would expect by a, a naive new model. What do you mean? What do you mean by shuffle text? You shuffle, shuffle the words the or words. the letters? The words. The left, the word, my, my unit of analysis of the word and the position of the words in the text are randomized. So I'm not doing this. Is anybody? The word is being used and the word is still there. 
Yeah, the words to that, I'm interested in one word, let's say LOL. So it was used by one uh, user three, four times, by a user B three times, and, and, and then I'm counting how many different users used at least once. Yes. And in here, I'm uh, putting these words and all other words as text in a random order. And then I shopping different users, different threads, and then I count uh, in this uh, randomized, no text structure, no, how many users would be, or what is the expectation. This is giving me some expectation. So this is taking into account that some users uh, wrote very long text and some others very little. So the, the, those that wrote very long are of course more probable of having used this word LOL that I'm interested. Okay. So I have to take into account the different contributions, the different time dependencies, and this is then uh, implicitly taken by this null model. So it's of course an naive null model, but at least makes it possible for me to compare two different windows and how disseminated the word is, how widespread is its usage, and or how concentrated in specific groups. Right. So in principle, I don't know whether the U is typically larger than one or smaller than one. So just a remark, I can do the same things replacing users by threads. So I'm and focusing on users as a proxy of individuals. But I could take the threads, the whole block of topics here, uh, of posts here, and consider this a topic. Right? So I'll be doing this in the, in the future. So here is the answer to the question, how is the U behaving? So I'm calculating for many different words in one window of six months the value of the U. So there is a bunch of points here that I'm not showing. So what I'm showing here is, uh, is the running median. So the this is the frequency of the word. The, the, the words that appear uh, more times appear here. The, the words that appear five times or very, very low frequency appear here. And of course there are more words appearing here than here. And that's why I'm using the running median and the running 10% and running 90% uh, quartiles, if you wish. Or, uh, so 80% 80 of the words are between these two lines. And what is striking is that the U is for all this range of frequency uh, smaller than one and uh, relatively stable, right? So that here there is an increase, but there are few words here. So there are uh, two decades of frequency where the words are uh, essentially having a DU around 0 0.7. Right? So this is a new mo uh, this is just a Monte Carlo simulation for the finite size effect, so we see that, that the fluctuations that we expect are much smaller than what we find in real world. So words are usually concentrated in terms of users. This is not surprising, right? So each person speaks uh, in, in, in an idiosyncratic way, and each topic, of course, there are words that are specific to one topic and not to the other. And that's why we obtain a dissemination that is smaller than one. Okay? Uh, okay, let's apply our tool to our database and see what do we get. So here uh, I'm taking one window and I'm putting in the, in the x-axis now the dissemination uh, of the word. So each dot here is a different word and I'm comparing how the frequency changed between in two years. Right? So I take a six month window here and six month window two years later and I'm plotting this scatter plot. So from, from this plot you don't see much. But if we, I again plot the, the running median, and uh, we, we see that uh, there is a tendency, that clear tendency, that uh, uh, words with smaller dissemination coefficient, meaning more concentrated, they have a tendency to decay in frequency. Right? So there is a correlation between the dissemination of the word and the frequency change. Uh, so this is something that, uh, for instance, is in this analysis of Google Books or in similar analysis, the, there are uh, one of the leading factors people identify for frequency change of words is their frequency themselves. So uh, regular verbs, for instance, uh, uh, modify faster if they are less frequent, right? So um, uh, verbs that you use more frequently mo are modified less. So this is a new, apparently, a new factor is how much the word is widespread in a community right? in, in one individual, in one instant of time. So, so this is uh, the same thing now for the two groups. Uh, I'm, I'm putting some flavor here, there are some words. So this is uh, 1998, so Windows 95 was the decaying frequency, that's why it appears here down. 
and PGP is also decaying, while GNOME and wireless were increasing in frequency, right? And, but what I want to show here is that this is true for both groups and this is true for all pairs of windows. So this is the, the, the same for all pairs of windows. So this is a very robust observation. It is uh, so robust that it's also true if we compute instead of users, I use topics or threads. Right? So this is the dissemination of words in terms of topics. So how many topics these words appear and the same tendency appears right? So in, in all groups and in all cases. So what we decided to do is to compare how much uh, uh, the users or the dissemination in users and the dissemination in topics and the frequency itself was important to these groups. And what we obtain is that the dissemination in users uh, is much more important than the dissemination in threads and in frequency. So you can think this as uh, the percentage of the variance in frequency that is explained by each of these factors. And so users uh, stands out as the, as the most important factor in both groups, uh, explaining uh, 10 and 20 percent of, of the fluctuations in frequency. And frequency that was detected previously on longer time scales was almost uh, uh, not correlated with frequency change. There is another sense that users are more important than topics, that is, if you plot just for all words, uh, uh, the distribution of, of, of the dissemination. So we see that uh, in both groups, there are some words that are really very much concentrated in users, while this is not so much true in, in topics. So apparently the vocabulary of uh, individuals in, in, in these Usenet groups are, is being more strongly determined by the language these users use, instead of topics that they are discussing. Of course, both factors play a role. Okay, well, we did an, ana an analysis uh, trimming the data sets that, so that they have the same statistical features, but the, the, the values change, but the, 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 the conclusion do not change. So I'm not able to this very technical. So I, I sh I've showed you this before, and, and I was mentioning these, these outlier skills. So there are clearly some words, and we can already identify what they are now, so products or uh, internet slangs that uh, stand out of this plot. So we, we decided to take a look, uh, a closer look in these words, and for that we detected uh, automatically a list of uh, about 50 to 100 products and slangs, internet slangs, that became popular uh, in this database. Uh, for, for instance, this, this case. And so what do we learn the, about the, this plot now? Is now we can look at this plot in a different diagram. So where here I'm plotting frequency, and here I'm plotting the dissemination. So what we see here, time is given a sort of parametrization for the word GNOME, for instance. This increase in time, this increase in frequency here. It's, uh, it's shown here, so time is going this direction, so frequency is increasing. But what is surprising here is that the dissemination of this word, so this dissemination in terms of users, is smaller than the median of other words. Right? So I already emphasized that the more disseminated the word is, the more people uh, are speaking it, the more probable that the frequency will increase. So words that are here with very low dissemination, that are very specific to users, they, on average, tend to decay in frequency. But this did not happen, for the instance, for the word GNOME, that was able to, to increase in frequency despite being, having a small uh, dissemination. And this is true for most of the product words, and less true for the slang words, but it's still somehow true. And it, 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 this is uh, something similar happens in, in the hip-hop group, for instance, here I'm tracking a rapper, Eminem, where, which has exactly the same feature, right? So it's, it increases in frequency while concentrated in a very small group, a small niche of users that probably like this singer. And then when it achieves a, a certain frequency, it raises and, and, and uh, the dissemination. And uh, the same is true in terms of topics. So there are only some topics speaking about Eminem. Right? So, and we saw that in general, words that are very topic concentrated, they tend to decay in frequency. But in this case, they are able to, to increase. And the understanding in, the, in this case, it's quite obvious for products is because simply Eminem has some, some some sort of fitness or some sort of intrinsic quality that these, these uh, fans perceive 
and so it is kind of fueling the increase in frequency, right? So there's something other words that typically do not help, and so and it's because this exogenous forcing <coughs> is that it, it, uh, these words can overcome uh, this uh, statistical tendency of of decaying frequency. Okay, so I'm coming to the last part of my talk. Uh, so far, uh, most of the things I, I said here were uh, statistical correlations and analysis of, of individual words. And this is still an ongoing work, it's not published. We are trying now to, to understand the, this in a more microscopic or modeling way. Right. So the battery apparently is over. So the pointer is okay. Uh, so uh, the model I'm, I'm doing here to, to reproduce is we focus on in one word, right? So I'm focusing in one of the words, for instance, LOL. And so I'm assuming now that each user of, in this community is using this word randomly, which is a simplification. But let's assume it, it has a frequency and it is using this as a Poisson process uh, with a frequency of new i, of user i. And I'm assuming also that each user contributes uh, uh, to the text with a frequency of words MI, with MI tokens to the text. And then in this case, uh, my whole population is described by the joint probability, ho M nu, meaning that the, the fraction of my population that uses M words and speak their word I'm interested in with a frequency of me. Okay. And then, in this case, under this assumption, it is possible to calculate the frequency of my word of interesting here, simply integrating uh, over this distribution. So the and so this is the number of times the word appears on average, and this is the total num text of, of my of my database. So I'm able also to compute the expected number of users uh, and the null model. Remember. This is a new model that would assume that all have the same frequency, no? equal to f, which is not true in general, because here I'm being more specific in my model, is that they can have uh, 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 different distributions. So here uh, I'm able to, to compute all these things explicitly under this assumption. Rho sub n? Rho sub n is the projection of, well, you can see here is the, is the integral. I can since here f does not depend on a new. I can integrate this uh, for new you know, for the frequency, and then this is the Laplace transformation of the density hole. Okay. So because the, th this is the expected frequency in this naive model, which is independent of the real mu. So. Let's con uh, so I can compute my dissemination in terms of users explicitly in this case, right? so which is a, a simply the variation between this and this by definition. So uh, let's consider a very simplified model. I have two populations. One of them speak, uses the word, and the other does not. Okay, uh, and uh, those that speak the word use that with a given frequency, new star. Okay, and all of them uh, contribute the same to the text, which is also uh, not truth in general. This will be more like a log normal distribution, but let's simplify things. So I, I can then calculate the dissemination du analytically. Okay, so now uh, how do I try to connect this to frequency change? So suppose one word uh, had a, a frequency like that, which is one of the most frequent words in our database and a du 0.7. So this for this can achieve, be achieved assuming that the, the, the population is split into two equal parts and, the frequent in, and one part of the population is using this frequency to the word. So this is, I would say, is the, my first window. So if this is true in one window, I'm asking now what happens if I now modify my, this value, new star. And by changing new star, so this is the parameter I'm focusing on, how du changes as a function of the frequency change. So there are two things I can do. I can change how much this population that is using it, how uh, frequent they use this word, or how enthusiastic they are. And so and this is, would mean that 
increasing how enthusiastic they are will go through this line and decreasing will go through this line, right? So the, uh, du will change and frequency will change. Frequency will increase, increasing a uh, new star and the dissemination will decrease and the other way around here. And there is a, a different factor that I could do. I could increase the size of the population, right? So if LOL is being assimilated by this group, Sorry, that means that... When this dimension decreases, why you increase the frequency? I mean, if you increase the frequency, then you... Why, why the dissemination decreases? Yeah, so, well, um, <laughs> you, you can look at the formula, but uh, uh, oh, this right. is getting by, get got by the formula, but it's also easy to understand because it, this is simply meaning that the fraction of users using it, it's more, um, they are more enthusiastic about it. So my new model that would compute my F, that would be attributed to all users, would increase. And then uh, this would mean that the U tilde here would uh, change and then it would lead to that. But what is interesting is that the opposite effect happened if I change the size of the population. Now I say that the fraction of the population that uses the word is changing. Okay, it's a different thing. So the population is still as enthusiastic as it was for this word, but they are taking new users for, for their group. And the change would be in the opposite quadrant, right? So increasing the population size would uh, come together with an increase in the U, and a decrease in population size would, come, uh, would decrease the U. So in some sense, we can think that this is the healthy increase. So it is increasing by uh, getting new uh, uh, users. Well, and, and in this case, my dissemination coefficient also increases it because more widespread in the population. Well, this is, would be the unhealthy increase. It's simply saying we will start speaking this crazily and ignore the others. And so this would just mean that the U would decrease. And so some preliminary analysis of the words in general, so this is uh, the data I have. So this is a scatter plot for all the words in my database. And if we plot the median, what we see here that in general it is on this diagonal, suggesting that what is going on in most of the words is that uh, just the same people are using the words more and more, but the number of people using it is not changing. So most of the fluctuations or most of the words in my database are probably the fluctuations that I'm seeing in frequency are being given by a uh, fluctuations in the frequency of a specific population and not uh, on the changes in the population size. But of course, the, uh, in the future one would like to analyze what happens with these outliers here, whether we can get more information and whether we can, uh, it, whether it is useful to look at the words that uh, can increase in frequency and increase in dissemination. Uh, hand in hand, that that would be the more healthy increase. Is it data for different times? So, so this is a each dot is a different. Each time. dot is a one word in two windows. <coughs> so I calculate uh, the dissemination in window one, window two, frequency in window one, frequency in window two, and then I compute uh, the change in the dissemination and a change in the in the frequency, in a log frequency. So this is an increase in frequency. This is a decrease in frequency. And the, so the, this is exactly the same thing that I did here in, in my model, you know? and uh, the results appear to really be indicating that most words is what one gets parametrically, only the frequency change. Okay, so let me summarize, um, try to convince you that Usenet is an interesting database in terms of time scales and in terms of the language. Uh, I introduced the uh, a statistical measure, a dissemination D, which is uh, allowing for a statistically robust quantification of the, how widespread the word is in a group or in a topic. And it is, I found uh, as an observation that it is positively correlated with frequency change. And, uh, well, this last uh, point I mentioned now, uh, individuals in general are more important than uh, frequency and than topics in the uh, change of words uh, and then uh, well products or lines all overcome all these tendencies and the idea is that they, uh, they have a uh, endogenous or exogenous motivations for that right so in the case of slangs it's something happening endogenously to the group and in the case of products that is more uh, that is stronger this tendency it is uh, exogenous 
Well, thank you. It's time for some more questions or comments. Ingo? This is kind of a single particle theory, right? You only look at the of a, of a particular word. Uh, but I can, could imagine there is also effects like society only accept, accepting a certain number of new words in a given time, right? So that there might be some kind of saturation effects uh, like that, which could explain why the average gives you this unhealthy growth um, that, that, that you show. Uh, do you have any ideas how to incorporate that? Yeah, I, I think, um, well, short answer is no, so what I perhaps can say is that uh, I think what, what happens for this is, I don't, I don't think it's the, the, the limiting factor is how many new words people can adopt, but uh, more uh, if whether people understand what they are writing, right? So there, there are no subtitles there. And so a word like LOL or GNOME, if you never saw what is this, you will not be interested by that. But that isn't that linked? You're only interested to a certain amount of and new words and, and willing to yeah. follow me. Well, I think the learning abilities of humans is, is, is impressive, so we would be able to learn them if in the proper context, but uh, you are right that in practice you, you ignore if you don't understand, and that would probably lead to the same what you have mentioned in practice, so that you will not be willing to adopt these things so fast. In fact, yeah. uh, what about work-to-work -work interaction? I mean, uh, if there is a user that has this healthy growth, that it means it uses a lot of work, this means that probably this user is not using all the work with similar meaning, and the work, this work, the user is increasing dramatically on both users of the of that. So can you, can you determine if that's the case? I mean, if, for example, the increase on the use of, I don't know, the work LOL is against other ways of Say the same or yeah, that, that, that's that's a good point. I, I did not look so far in the competition between two languages, so it's two words, mm -hmm. uh, and that that would be uh, one thing that could be done once you identify pairs of words that are competing, and then want to try to see the interaction between these two words mm -hmm. that suddenly exists because people are making rational choices. What do they use? Right? So this is implicit here, so I was not emphasizing here, but when I say that users are more important, it means that there's a choice of the users in using LOL instead of a different word. So this is the, is the determinant. And then in the evolution, it would be the case that many of the users say there's a language which is more and more poor in the sense that they, they use more and more the given words and not other ones, so that they tend to use a single word for a given right. set of meanings. And then, and then from that you can get a new word appears exactly. and takes all the, all the, say, all the meaning of uh, several words. Yeah. But would that be the case? I mean, well, according to your results, I mean, all yeah, I, I did not look explicitly on that, but in general what you described, I think, is what is believed to be true, that new words are introduced, they take some time to convert, but on longer time scale they became, they are being drifted and the frequency decays. Uh, right? They give, that, uh, give space to new words. But besides on that, the, the fact that the word becomes more popular means an important uh, of the, that the language is more poor, is less. I mean, if you use the word right. get in English for many, many things that you don't use many yes. other words that have that could be used yeah. as that for specific. This is one effect, not some sort of semantic bleaching. The, the, the meaning of the words, this is how the linguist would say, is the semantic bleaching, the, the, the sense that color is being bleached. But there are other tendencies in language that tend to sharpen the word and to, to acquire more specific meaning. So I would not uh, risk to say anything more general. But yeah, certainly this, the two types of phenomena exist. And which is more important in each case, it would be nice to have statistical measures to quantify that. Can you show mostly examples of words which have an effect of concentration? Right. Do you have examples of words yeah. which are more disseminated than yeah. the average? There are some, but I, they are some. I look at that, but these are mostly artifacts, things like uh, greetings or saying hello. No? So, Things that you write in every single post, for instance, but only once, 
or, uh, or goodbye, let's say. So uh, our new model would expect these words to be uh, more concentrated while uh, they appear once in every single. So if you imagine a word that appears in every single post but only once would have a very high dissemination. And I could, many of the examples of, of these words were, were like that. Thank you or, or things like that. I don't think the title of the paper in close, I don't understand the niche work. Yes. You just say that the, the individuals are more important than frequency and topic, what do you mean by niche? Yeah, so like the idea is that this uh, DU could be interpreted as a measure of uh, the breadth of, of the extent of, uh, of, of a niche, right? So how widespread the world is in, 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 in the niche of users. So that's, that's the idea. So that the words are somehow competing. So that's, it's easier to think in terms of topics, right? So some words are uh, more suited for specific topics, and these topics would uh, somehow uh, build a niche uh, where these words would, uh, would feed. And, and, uh, and then the DU would be quantifying how spread, how wide is this uh, niche. And a small DU would mean that it's a very specific, very sharp niche. So that's, that's the idea. Yeah, and you take into account some of the variations of frequency of the, the words. It says that, I mean, as long as these words can, can, can be very long in time. No? So uh, and the word can be very popular at certain point, and let's talk about uh, yeah. the words. This increases your uh, user, but it's not your distribution of users. No? Well, I think that's the idea in this type of plot, for instance, right? So how, uh, while the word is increasing in frequency, for instance, here the dissemination is remaining fairly constant, right? Of course, here is, for instance, a, a much more complicated pattern. But in principle, with this normalization I do in the dissemination, I'm taking into account in the new model at, at least the zero order effect of how frequent it is, because then the new model would also predict more users. Right, so my new model is just a randomized yeah, so it's, it's randomized over all the time of the post, no? so all, all of the time of the window, yeah. yeah. The time, yeah. 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 Each each point here is one time window fixed and then I do it for the next one. Ah, okay. One day more, one day more. Okay. So I suppose that the I mean you would expect the same behavior you would have access to other kind of data, right? So for example, I mean uh, if uh, now that the, the APS file is uh, available, so if you could track the title in the American Physical Society I mean, uh, yes. or the uh, physical review paper, you have the titles and yeah. you could track the words that appear in the, in the, in the titles and different volumes would be like topics Absolutely. that come, uh, come and go. So uh, I suppose what well, the question is the expectation is could be similar to what you see here and what are the implications for merging and new fields coming and um, merging or joining different... Um, yeah. yeah, I think it, it, it is possible, right? So one could track facts, right? So and see words... Well, or directly the titles. Or directly the titles and see how, but see how many different topics, specific words appear. And the interpretation would be here that on statistically, uh, words that appear in different topics or uh, methods that appear in more widespread topics would be more successful in the future, right? So will be uh, being used uh, more successful in the future than, let's say, methods or ideas that are very concentrated in a niche of science. Yeah, that could, that would be the analogous and the niche. But I don't think uh, I could make more specific predictions, right? So, but that that would be the idea. So if you look at the um, uh, ideas or methods now that are being, have the same frequency, have been the same number of papers, you could distinguish between them calculating the U. So the one that would be used in different, more different areas would increase more in the future than now. But I think we, we, st we still have to do more uh, serious job in, in the direction of prediction, for, for instance, using these things. So, so far we detected correlations uh, but I believe it would be possible to do it. I would like to what Stella said. I mean, one word can become popular because well, it's a new well, it's a phenomenon popular so that appears and then people use it. But it can also become popular because uh, I mean, the, the richness of the language is diminished, and, uh, as we use uh, for 
different things, the same type of world being less specific. Now, this second thing implies a different way of people interacting. Mm -hmm. so, but all that is there. Yeah. It's, it's not there. Be, yeah, I mean, it is there, but it's not separated from each other, right? So what I did here was selecting uh, this, this list of words, like, uh, for instance, I mentioned here, as slangs and products, right? And, and then to see what happens in these cases. But if one had a list of words where these uh, phenomena are happening, one could check what is going on with these cases. But, so it's, I agree, some of these words might have been experiencing that, but it is hard to tell uh, uh, from the data in which cases this is happening, in which cases that. So one of that the means that this, that analysis that you are doing in terms of work, that, that's a question, it doesn't tell you anything about how people interact. Well, it, it tells, I mean, it tells that, uh, well, how they interact. Well, yeah, so if you, if you assume that frequency change is also because people are, uh, uh, well, that's the implicit assumption, right? So the world becomes more frequent because people are copying each other. And so the only way of people using LOL is to copy other people that use the LOL. So that's the standard approach and uh, evolutionary uh, uh, algorithms or dynamics to, to frequency change. So the, the, the words are replicators. And so in this case, so if you assume this, then we would say that uh, our results that the U is correlated with frequency change is saying that uh, people are copying more other people instead of being driven by topics, for instance. That, that is the type of, of conclusion I would be able to make, but nothing more detailed of who is copying who or this and so More questions? No, let's thank our speaker. <laughs> Let me remind you that Eduardo will leave this evening, so if you want to talk to him and have a dance over, then do it soon. <laughs>